Hey everybody, Peptide Buddy here. It's been a while. I figured I'd further dive into the ever complex topic of peptides and hormone optimization in the context of Liver King. And to be honest, I feel like the public has been blessed to figure out that this physique is hugely a result of a concoction of different compounds. Like, look at the dude in the bottom left corner. He looks great. He looks like someone worth a hundred million dollars. But I think this whole situation really does a disservice to those trying to better their own health. And I'll explain why, because this is a topic that's important to me. So, I mean, quick rant before the fun part, before we dive into some of the science briefly, but, you know, typically in my videos, you don't have to listen to what I say because I lay everything out in kind of, you know, this keynote uh, form, but here, sparing my ego, it's kind of important. Um, at least in what I'm trying to kind of exhibit through this video and analyzing this pretty ridiculous stack. So we live in a world with uncharted access to info. However, when that access is influenced by people like the King of Liver and arguably incomprehensible protocols like the image you see on the screen here, I think that the public's medical autonomy becomes greatly inhibited. And don't get me wrong, I think appropriate medical physician oversight for health-defining decisions is ideal and important. But when the media is drawn to ridiculous scenarios like these, where someone who claims natural in spite of physical evidence to the contrary, and then releases a protocol that combines seven plus compounds with overlapping roles and health risks, all this further attracts the media's attention, right? So it really does a disservice to people doing their own research to better their own health in the context of hormone optimization. So while I'm thankful, thankful that this email came out so we can talk more about peptides, kind of put Liver King's picture next to this protocol, I think how ridiculous this stack is will probably make the public's access to, you know, research guided risks and benefits of peptides even harder. Because like many things in the world, the media's kind of, you know, the media's propagated, like, image of something is, is so big that it, it really masks a lot of what we can learn out of situations. So, that said, let's talk about this protocol because why are we all here to learn about peptides? So, I guess like we always claim, this video is going to be cut to the chase and evidence-based. Um, focusing in on why Liver King combine these peptides together and whether or not I think it's appropriate, given the very obvious caveat that this isn't medical advice. That said, it's fun as hell and a hobby of mine. So, you know, of note, I've previously made videos on all the compounds above. Uh, links will be in the description. And so here we're pretty much just speculating on the synergy of these compounds and whether or not this makes sense. Um, so please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, it's been a pleasure to kind of talk with everyone about different peptides and see that others out there share the same interests as myself. So here is Liver King's peptide combo. And let's not forget the fact that you know, he also takes over $11,000 in growth hormone a year, which further conflates everything. But so briefly, running through the combo, this is an N equal one study. If you look in journals, you're not going to find someone on IGF-1, LR, CJC with Ipamorelin, Ibutamarin, Winstrol, Deca, testosterone, growth hormone. You're not going to find somebody on all this different stuff. And so this isn't, you know... PubMed research. This isn't peer-reviewed. This is what is Liver King doing? Um, so, ignoring the growth hormone, ignoring the anabolics. Let's see what he's on. So, here's a handy dandy chart. I made it real quick, um, but I think it gets kind of the general gist of things across. He's on IGF-1, LR, IGF-1 analog that agonizes its receptor. So, pretty much just Increased downstream effects of growth hormone, i.e. IGF-1, CJC, analog of GHRH, and also a growth hormone secretagogue 
So downstream effects are increases in growth hormone and IGF-1, ipamorelin, an agonist of the GH ghrelin receptor. So in suppressing somatostatin creates a favorable environment for secretion of growth hormone, releasing hormone and growth hormone. And finally, ibutamarin, a ghrelin receptor agonist and GH secreted GOG. So more GH, more GF, IGF-1, which you know, in terms of uh, vanity and aesthetics, this is pretty much, I mean, it's not technically anabolic, but it's very heavy in recovery, uh, promotion of lean body mass, sleep. Um, I mean, there are definitely downsides, uh, which we'll briefly get into as well. But, you know, does it make sense? Does it make sense that Liver King is on all this crap? I mean, you see his picture, right? He's not terrible looking. He's got a damn impressive one percenter physique. But it's impossible to tell whether it's worth it because he takes so much crap. And, you know, I'm sure if you run his labs, you're going to find someone who has a ton of secretory growth hormone, releasing hormone, GH, downstream IGF-1, logically, because he's on growth hormone, because he's on all this other stuff. However... I'm sure he's also got cholesterol that's out of whack. I'm sure he has a higher propensity for cancer growth. I'm sure he has a higher propensity for, and if not already, insulin resistance. This is when attempting to figure out if all this puts together in a synergistic way gets out of hand, right? Like imagine we have someone who's overweight who wants to lose weight with pharmacology. It's like, like combining all this different stuff is like, putting together semaglutide with DNP, trenbolone, thyroid hormone, all things that on paper may not be safe and may help somebody lose weight, but like, of course they're going to lose weight. They're on all, all this crap, and I'm sure there's a ton of side effects and a ton of lab abnormalities, but, you know, we don't know what's doing what and at what cost. So, in my opinion... Stacks like these put a dent in whatever risks, benefits we could be teaching people about and conducting research on. And, you know, like we got Liver King, one of the world's most popular characters, and putting it in this wild context of overuse and lack of common sense with all these compounds with overlapping roles, extreme financial incentives in what he's doing, extreme costs involved, international media incentive, popularity, it as a whole just kind of clowns the common individual's access to learning about things. So do I personally think it's excessive? Hell yeah. Mainly because we have no idea what compounds doing what. And when you got someone on multiple anabolics, multiple GHRHs, multiple GHs, multiple IGF-1s, it's absurdity. And uh, that said, hey, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching this half as, I, half as much as I enjoyed making it. And honestly, I was just going to look at the peptide combo at first, um, but I decided to kind of just dive in more on how I actually feel about it because um, I think access to not just pharmacology but learning about hormone optimization is really important and I think it's easy for the media like most things to get in the way so please like and subscribe take care everybody we'll speak soon more videos coming out I promise take care